Hello there everyone, today's video is all about a specific tax relief that's available for non-residents over residents. Now, historically we've talked about the benefits of non-doms and domiciles and various um, you know, tax advantages that they have over UK domicile, but this is all about residents. And it is a relief that I would suggest is not known by very many people at all. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about residential property. So, before I tell you what that relief is, let's just review the situation. If you are a non-resident, so let's say you are an expat living in Dubai and you've been there for many, many years and let's assume you have a, uh, a buy-to-let property in the UK. So, you've got a residential property and you bought this resi property 10 years ago in 2013 for 300 grand. And you're going to get rid of it this year, 2023, for 500 grand. Now, we also need to bear in mind, what was the market value of that property in 2015 when they started, they, as in the taxman, UK HMRC, started taxing non-residents who disposed of UK uh, properties? Because before then... Often there was no capital gains tax to pay if you were non-resident on your UK assets, including resi. Anyway, it all changed 2015. So we need to know what was the market value of the property 2015. Let's assume that it is 400,000. So, three figures. Flogs it for 500 grand, 2023. Market value 2015, 400. Bought it in 2013 for 300. So, what is the capital gain for our expat living in Dubai when he sells his UK buy-to-let property? Well, he's got a choice of three ways to calculate the gain. There's not many instances in the tax world in this country where you get a choice. In this case, you get a choice of three ways to do it, and you go with the one that is the most favourable to you. It gives you the best result. Terrific. So what are the three ways? Well, first of all is, we say, sales price and we reduce the purchase price also any enhancement expenditure so in this case let's assume that 50 grand was spent on the property in say 2018 so we say, essentially it's a measure of how much it's increased in value since those rules came in in 2015 and in this case 50,000 pounds so the second option is to say, look, just take the gain from what you uh, sold it for compared to what you bought it for, less any enhancement expenditure, and time apportion it. So in option number two, sold it for 500, bought it for 300, spent 50 grand doing it up, that's 150 gain, and then it's, it's the years since 2015 that we care about, which is eight years over the 10 years of full ownership, that's 120 grand. So straight away, that's more than double option one, so you wouldn't do that. Option three, well, option three is even worse. It just says, look, what's the full gain? Never mind any time apportionment. And the gain is 500 less 300 less 50 is 150. The only reason you would do option three is if in these circumstances, the numbers were different and you sold at a loss. So if you sold the thing for a, a loss, you sold it for less than you bought it for, that's when you go with option three. But in this case, on these random numbers, you go with option one. And you got a £50,000 gain. Now, the relief that I'm coming on to talk about is what we call rollover relief, which basically says if you invest in another asset in the UK of a similar type, that gain is deferred and rolled over into the cost of the new property. So that's terrific. If you're an expat and you sell a UK buy-to-let and you want to basically reinvest in another UK buy-to-let, there is no capital gains tax on that initial disposal of property number one because the gain is rolled over into property number two and that's when the gain will kick in if and whenever you sell property number two. And that relief is not afforded to UK residents. UK residents can have that relief on commercial property, but they can't have it on residential property. 
So for whatever reason, HMRC brought this in um, and not a lot of expats know about it, but it is there. So rollover relief where you sell the UK residential property and buy another one, another buy to let in the UK, that gain on property number one can be rolled over, deferred into property number two. If you live in the UK, no such relief, only available for non-residents. So there you go. So this is video aimed at <laughs> non-residents. Uh, if you're in this situation uh, and you wanted to sell your property, like I said, you've got a choice of three ways to calculate the gain. If you then want to reinvest the proceeds in another property, terrific news, you don't have to pay any capital gains tax on that disposal, subject to how much you then uh, contribute into the second property. But just an overview there on the non-resident capital gains tax rules in the UK. If you like this video, please do subscribe. And as always, I'll see you soon.